Welcome back and thank you very much for your time staying with us here on TV3 New Day. You can always join the conversation on WhatsApp on 020216633. That's 020216633. The Auditor General is reported to be resisting Yoko Probe. Investigative body fires back. Domelovo can't give own interpretation. That's the daily graphic. And $20 million found to be set up for small businesses. Uh, Minister for Business Development, Mohamed Awal. Then three auto firms to unveil locally assembled cars and ACP Agojo's bail application fails. The business finder, let's see if we can find something back to Enforce GIPC law on retail trade. Uh, Guta is asking and Meteo says there's no heat wave in Ghana. They find a newspaper. We didn't propose no vote. Our concern is seeming marginalization of chiefs in local development. Professor SKB Asante contradicts Togwe Afede and Dasibre Ewusi. Yes, vote will end winner takes all system, according to the MPP's John Buedu yesterday for fallouts from a press conference that they had. We're seeking $20 million to support young businesses, Dr. Wal, and rice farmers in Upper East appeal for market and storage facilities. The Daily Guide. ACP Agojo still caged, denied bail. Nana meets Dubai Sheikhs and Yoko grants Auditor General bail. More chiefs deny Tobia further. And those are the stories we have there on the front pages. Uh, we know that the Black Stars yesterday also played in South Tome. Interesting, is it not? Well, my guest this morning, Dr. Ahmed Jinapo, is a senior lecturer at the University of Education <coughs> in Winneba, Mr. Stephen Amwa is the boss at Maslock and the Honorable Adam Mutawakilu is a member of parliament for the Damongo constituency. He is in a race for a second time, a yeah. uh, third time. Well, he hopes to grab a victory again in 2020. Thank Gentlemen, you. welcome. Thank you. Doc, Thank you. been a while. How are you, sir? He, he's my <laughs> colleague. <laughs> third time. Okay. Oh, but, but Primaries. He, oh, but he is in there. <laughs> ah, you are in there. I'm a member of You're lucky. <laughs> is it matter? Is it matter? Of, is it a matter of luck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it a matter of luck? Uh, I don't know what this, but my belief, I don't believe in luck. Okay. I believe in the will of God and also the people because okay. sometimes God can allow people. You know, when you go, when you go to Romans 13, 1, he says that there is no leadership except that he God raises. Okay. But when it comes to David, God said that David's leadership is out of my perfect will. Mm -hmm. But when he came to Saul, he said that it is not out of my perfect will, but my permissive will. Okay. So sometimes the way people are ungrateful and they don't analyze things can push God to say, okay, I'll give you your will. So leadership is something do, else. Do you fear delegates? Oh, every human being. That's why the Bible do, says. Do you? Fear no, delegates are human beings. And God says that woe unto one that put his trust. Okay. So for when you're dealing with man, anybody man, human, I'm not saying fear the person, but be careful the way you invest your trust. Do you fear delegates? I think you understand what I'm saying. They no. are human beings. I'm not afraid of them. Okay. But I'm careful when it comes to my trust. Okay. Because they are human beings. Okay. It's only God that cannot fail you. Man right. can fail you. Doc, okay. how are you doing? Tuesday morning. Uh, no bad. How's the body? Oh, the body's okay. <laughs> Sitting with uh, 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 Two, two important people uh, that I know. I mean, oh, he's my important. He's my MP and uh, okay. very, yeah, very oh, good wow, friend. Oh wow, that's yeah, your yeah. MP. Yeah, very. Amazing. You know, my mom comes from Damango. Ah, yes. And yes. We're, we're schoolmates. He was my one year senior. Very good oh, friend Damango. of mine. So you yeah. know, so for for so solar road. Which part of Ghana don't I know? Mystica is my very good friend. Stephen Amwa, twenty ten. I know. Great question. How are you, sir? I'm doing. I'm doing and how are the grounds? Yes. We are on it. Okay. I know that the, the debates have started in Parliament yeah. on the budget. What have we been picking up? The budget is it has no hope. Some of most. Well, how, how, how do you say that? That the budget has races. no hope. If you come to the energy sector, you realize that Ghana has lost ten billion mm -hmm. dollars because of the decision of President Akufuado to renegotiate the petroleum agreement. Wow. Yeah. So you say there's and no hope. And we did indicate that when they brought the re uh, renegotiated agreement. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's sad for Ghana. OK. I don't know what you think, but Thank it says there's no hope in the budget. No. Well, the budget that the government says will 
uh, make us prosperous. I, I, I don't know. But page four of the Finder newspaper says, Rice Farmers in Upper East appeal for markets and story facilities. Um, the Rice Farmers in Fumbisi in the Bulsa South District of the Upper East Region are appealing to the government to provide markets and storage facilities for their massive rice harvest this year. While some of the farmers are unable to find market for their produce or good storage facilities, others are selling it at giveaway prices because the markets are flooded with imported rice uh, sold at relatively lower uh, rates. Let's take a look at the original story and how the farmers were lamenting. We'll come back to talk about it because we do know that we spend in excess of $1.3 billion every year to import rice into this country. Why do we do that? when well, we can grow them here and sell them here at a cheaper rate. Take a look at the story. Rice production in the Upper East and parts of the Northern regions have gone up astronomically this year, owing to a number of factors including planting for food and jobs. Ironically, the absence of storage facilities coupled with lack of market have left the rice farmers stranded. Farms, homes and shoulders of roads were inundated by heaps of rice. The major rice buyers are nowhere to be found. The focus of government, especially the planting for food and jobs, is more on the production side. But there is little effort on the marketing. But does it make sense? And it is not helping us. So we think that Government has to do something about this. We have been able to produce enough rice, which we can feed the country. But I don't know why the market is not there. Now, we don't have any source of market. We have tried everywhere, and we are not getting market. The buyers are citing poor roads and other challenges. Now, rice is Langomi here. You know Langomi. Our people usually go, they, 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 if you get a buyer to buy, when they buy two bags, you does them one bag. When you buy two bags of the tall sacks of rice, they says five which is as tall as myself. They buy two bags, you add them one bag to that. So three for two, they pay for two, but you give them three bags. And that is the situation in Fumbisi here. Not only Fumbisi, Gulimbisi, Vadis, passing pair, and anywhere you go, that is the situation. And we are not even getting them. The disheartening development compelled most farmers to resort to virtually begging the people in wooing strategies to get their produce bought. The market women who are coming to buy we have to chase them, give them bribes, buy guinea fowls for them before we even get them to come to our, uh, and then they buy the rice. And the rice is buy two and take one free, adding to what they have bought. So it means two bags, then one free. Chunk of the rice are still standing on fields and farmers are apprehensive they might lose them to bushfires. Why will Ghana with all these resources continue to import rice? I'm telling you, if you take these valleys alone, We'll be able to feed this country for half a year. One season, northern region are also producing the same quantity. You go to Volta region, Hohoi, Ketu North, and Co. They are also producing the same thing. You go to western region like Sefi, you are showing all those areas. They are producing the same quantity. You go to Upper West, the same thing. So we are producing so much that this country can actually consume and we still have surplus for export. So why do we flood the market? with imported rice. However, the Upper East Regional Minister Paulina Patience Abayagi is confident a solution is on hand soon. You are aware that we are building, what is that, warehouses. In fact, the minister mentioned the warehouses. Uh, what, yes, yes, we have nine of them currently ongoing in the region. The only thing is that we haven't completed them yet. But what this means for us as a government is push hard, push hard, push hard, and finish this, uh, what is that, if, even if we finish these nine warehouses, that is, which each warehouse takes a thousand metric tons. That alone will be 9,000 metric tons. Most of the warehouses are about 90% complete in this region. As for Yagaba, we have, have a warehouse that is completely finished. So the ministry and buffer stock, I have to push for them to finish this so that we can take in the extra harvest. The good thing about these warehouses is that it's not just for government. Even individuals who like to store for future purpose can go and store in those warehouses. 
So that's the plight of rice farmers out there in Fumbisi. I'm just checking up uh, Ghana Web from a story from 2017 where the Deputy Minister for Trade and Industry, Robert Ahumkanlin, says disclosed that uh, Ghana spent $1.1 billion in 2017 for rice importation alone. But around this table, I think the figure that we have is $330 million. Well, I had seen some $1.3 billion also on the front page of the Finding newspaper. A, a question of data uh, maybe uh, flying around here and there. But, Doc, let me start this conversation with you. Where from our insatiable uh, desire for imported rice to the extent that even the ones we grow here, which could have fed all of us, are left to rot? Well, let me say a good morning to your <coughs> cherished viewers and to my colleagues. <coughs> and to answer your question simply, it's just that we are being human beings, and human beings by nature uh, want things that are good. In the sense that if you compare the rice that we produce here uh, to those that are imported, the imported ones are of quality, uh, they are of tastes, mm -hmm. and uh, I would say they are easily accessible. If we do a random survey of the four vessels in here, mm -hmm. the last time that we ate locally manufactured rice, I think that none of us will remember. But last week, mine was last week. Well, last week, but uh, probably. Uh, most Ghanaians don't eat local rice. Why is it the case? Because there's a substitute. Mm. There's a substitute. The substitute being what? The foreign imported what? Right. Rice. Mm. I think the documentary that you just showed is a tip of the iceberg. In the sense that I happen to come from the Savannah region. Mm. And uh, as you are aware, the Savannah region was just carved out of the northern region. Right. There's a documentary that was just aired not too long ago, I think a couple of days ago, at Savulgu. Mm. And with Savulgu, their problem is not even about marketing the product, mm -hmm. but it's about how to harvest it. Wow. They don't have combined harvesters. Wow. I know of a very, very prominent person in Savulgu who is mm -hmm. big in rice production. Mm -hmm. And I've had conversations with him, mm -hmm. and he laments the difficulty and challenges that he has to go through in order to sell his rice. Mm. I say this because, if you remember recently, President Kufo, in his wisdom, mm -hmm. his foundation started a program where they want to get into rice production. Right. Rice production. Right. And when I heard him wanting to go into such a venture, laudable as it is, mm -hmm. I said, I said, has his managers or whoever is involved, have they done serious feasibility studies relative to how production is done and how mm -hmm. marketing is done? Mm -hmm. Because if you have these guys who are into rice production, they cannot harvest it. They cannot market it. Then he is going into it. Then how viable will such a venture be? This brings us to a very important issue in Which terms is? of what? Attitude. Okay. Attitude. Attitude on whose side? Attitude on the part of Ghanaians. Mm. In terms of consuming what's rice. Because if you look at the documentary, the documentary that I just had, the gentleman was saying that, look, they are trying to convince people to even buy the rice yeah. at a very cheaper rate. They, they buy guinea fowl, guinea fowl. To, to lure them to buy. And... I think I wouldn't go too far to say that government hasn't done much in terms of trying to uh, help Ghanaians develop the taste and attitude and bring up pro programs that will uh, inure to the benefit of the local rice production uh, mm. people. But I think more needs to be done. And I say more needs to be done when I make reference to a recent loan mm. that was passed in Parliament relative to cocoa beverage production, okay. uh, consumption. Okay. You remember? Mm, I remember. About $5 million mm, or mm, whatever to yeah. help or to, to entice Ghanaians to, uh, to, to buy, consume to uh, chocolates. And mm, mm. I think such resources could also be channeled to places like what? Rice, rice. consumption. Because at the end of the day, Previous governments mm. have always put in measures to try as much as possible to ensure that locally manufactured rice mm. uh, is one that gets a, a boost. Mm. You remember the Aveime project right. under right. Uh, 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 Chikata and Co. Chikata, yeah. You remember Kufo, mm -hmm. I mean Mills. And the before Mo and all of and that. All that so is it just some kind of gimmick if you look at where we are today mm. and the evidence uh, that shows that, look, they can't even get people to buy rice? I think something seriously needs to be done. They, and I'm really interested mm. in knowing measures that have been put in place by government 
and uh, we need to get a trajectory of uh, how these measures have been put relative to solving the problem mm -hmm. from 2017, 2018, 2019. 2019. What has been done and how is it augmenting what? The, 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 the problem that we have. I can mm -hmm. tell you of a company that's very big in rice production, Avnash, mm -hmm. Avnash in mm -hmm. Northern Region. Mm -hmm. In fact, they are producing about 15% of their capacity. Wow. And if you go to Avnash, uh, uh, what do they call it? They are, they are, they are warehouses. Mm -hmm. Most of the rice that are there are paddy rice. They are those that have not been processed because they are scared that when they process them, they will not get market for them. True. So it tells you that the market issue is a very big issue. And I want to hear something from the Ministry of Agri, Ministry of uh, uh, is it, uh, Trade and Industry, trade, and, and even the, the Minister for is it, Local Development, uh, okay. Dr. Awal. Yes, yes. Dr. Awal. Yeah, business Development. Business Development. What is he doing in order to solve this problem? Because this is a big business right. venture that ca can be beneficial to not only Ghana, but to the people from the north. I, I know also Dr. Uh, Thomas Abanga, who used to grow rice up there in the north. He's now gone to Liberia because uh, Oponwia, President Oponwia yeah. came to call him to come. And he's doing very well in, in and as Liberia. And as he's in Liberia, mm. he's going to employ people to work. Right. That's job creation he's, that has been expected. He's doing very well in Liberia. He says, look, the soil here is good. He was planting, but... There's no market. There's no market. So There are no combined harvesters. I don't know. Steve, you, you are a farmer yourself. How does this come to you, first of all? Uh, knowing that you have toiled, you have tilled the dirt, you have planted, you have sweat. And, you know, there's a lot of sweat uh, that's drenched on your face. And <coughs> the produce is going nowhere. Um, thank you very much. Uh, before I proceed, I would like to extend my profound regards to the good people of Inshia mm. uh, Iso. The chiefs. <laughs> we haven't started. Why, why are you here? Why are you here? <laughs> you know, <laughs> declaration of intent. Politicians greeting. Declaration of intent. I have Stika, not I'll be you. my intent. Oh. Oh, okay. I'm only extending my regards. Okay. Exactly. okay. We, we are in let, let me note it. And please let me greet my mother. Oh, no, she can't speak English. Ma, me chair no pay. Ah. You, 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 call, you, you call your father. You should call your mother. You should call your mother. I call my mother. Yeah. Call your mother. Yeah. Call my mother. Yeah. She will be watching you live. And sometimes she does. And <laughs> when I get aggressive, she say, Yao Tobu, Yao Tobu. So, okay. anyway, so I greet everyone. Um, I think this aspect of our entire value chain is extremely critical. It's not only rice, but just because. According to the records I have, uh, I stand to be corrected. Rice importation takes about 82% of all imports into Ghana. Mm. And we consume about 1 million metric tons, mm -hmm. averagely per year, recently. And what you said was said by Lindsay. Mm. So it's true yes. that 1.1 1. 1. 1 billion in mm. 2017. So it could be true, it could be the other figure. Mm -hmm. But I am telling you, as he said, I am into palm plantation, right. but I do mess cropping as well. Mm. This year, I didn't do mess cropping. Do you know why? No. Last year, when I did mess cropping, um, cassava plantain, majorly, um, trust me, they all they went waste. Why? Because plantain, it was so cheap on the market that even transporting it by tractors to the main roadside mm. and then to the market, market. would have actually it would cost me something more than <laughs> you understand what I'm saying. Mm. So we left them in the bush. Before God, they went bad. Wow. Because plantain, that bunch, big one, you can get like four or five cities. So this year, yeah, that's Eastern in, in your farm? Yeah, my area. This is uh, in Kawanda, number one. Okay. Um, close to Nkoko. Okay. So this year, I decided, why should I put in money and I'm not getting it back? You don't get even the same amount. But, but your government is pushing people to do planting for food and jobs. Yeah, that, and it's good, and it's planting helping. Planting for export and I think and it's better we get food cheaper than scarcity, making the other people not having access to food. You understand what I'm saying? But there are challenges. But, but if what you're saying is anything to go by, mm -hmm. it's not the scarcity of the food. Now we have it in abundance. Yeah, pay that's your, what I'm analogy. saying. That and and we can't find a way to, to make the farmer happier. Uh, you, when you come out with any new policy, there are always challenges. Then that's why we have something called monitoring, evaluation, review, adjustments, and stuff like that. Mm. Once that thing, probably your projections, even for the quantity or the amount, will go into excess more mm. than that. Then you plan. One problem that we have, just give me one minute. Mm. I was a speaker in Milan 
there's this global uh, program with Obasanjo. Mm. And one of the issues that came up was why foreign countries are deciding the price of cocoa for mm. us. Mm. And then he said that those days, it was Ghana, Ivory Coast, Nigeria. Mm. So there was like a cartel. And they realized this. So they had planned to store and create scarcity. He said something funny, very interesting. <laughs> I was surprised. He said that the amount of money they needed that time to put storage materials and other, the whole system together, mm. they couldn't afford. I'm like, wow. If you look at the land cruises mm. and the big things mm. politicians mm. do in Ghana, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, this sub region, mm. okay? And you look at the amount they need for this. That was very funny. I'm trying to say that our number one difficulty as a people is our inability to plan comprehensively well the entire value chain of some of these things. Mm. Elsewhere, they will plan right from the inbound to outbound. The raw materials they need, the processing of it, the machines they will need, the core labor force that they will need, how it will be marketed locally and then, I mean, I mean foreign countries or internationally. They will plan all these and the possible risks that will come and they put in place contingency measures. So they'll even know that the, I was asking my honorable, because I don't know, I don't know whether Doc knows, the actual amount of rice consumed in Ghana. The question of data. You understand what I'm saying? Data. These are our problems. So, so but, I just realized but, but, but that the you're talking per about. capita we consume about 35 kilograms, whether that is true or not. If we have all these things in place, then can we think about excesses? Can we get it outside? Will it be... So you, know, you, you are in the driving seat now. Mm -hmm. You have uh, indicated that Agric is big on your agenda. Mm -hmm. Planting for food and jobs, planting for food and export, rearing for food and jobs. Agric is big. Yeah. And, you, and that is why, have you, and that have, is why it's growing from 3% to about 8.4% now. Have you considered... That is have you considered, that is better than we took over. Have you considered the, the steps and stages that you told us, you just enumerated now, in your planning? Uh, I can't say yes or no because you know government is broad. Where I am, I use this this phrase or term or whatever, and people even laugh at me when mm. I'm outside. Like because of asymmetrical information, it's not everything that I will know. And maybe they have their planning committees and other things. Probably they are doing. I can't say yes or no. But I had this experience when we wanted to do starch. Mm. What happened when we wanted to do sugar cane? What happened? I think one thing we should sit down, this is not basically MPP and this issue. As a people, mm. if we want to really do something, if we have a policy, mm. a white, no, the Western culture, I want to say mm. white man, mm. and even the Chinese, they will properly sit down, plan the entire value chain, even conduct policy drill, and get their mistakes. Like, I mean, I went to school mm. somewhere in right. the UK. Mm. Every Wednesday, they are saying that they're dread for fire alarm. Right. And then we all rush the assembly exactly. point. Even before they come out that this system is good, let's move. They will do everything. But this part of our world, we don't. And that's why people are suffering. We don't. Even now the farmers are saying they can feed organians. I, I'm telling you, it's not true. We haven't gotten there. So what proportion can we encourage? By what time, maybe four, three years' mm. time, can we do all the 1.1 1 .1 or 1 million metric ton in Ghana, locally, what will it take? Is it five years' time? Is it, can is, we do 50%? Can, can, we, can we also say that, look, for example, in the matter of planting for food and jobs, mm -hmm. the doc mentions combined harvesters, it mentions storage and all of that. Exactly. And Dr. Nkrumah had silos, blah, blah, blah. In the matter of planting for food and jobs, up until now, many people say, look, we have not seen the policy document. So we are planting, we are buying fertilizers, we are encouraging farmers, we are quoting figures and saying we, we have improved. The yield is better, but we don't have the policy direction where we are headed. You don't and have, we, or we, we have, but you haven't seen it. Is there a policy document? Of course. Those so who where, work will so have. So where is it? I'm coming. What I'm saying is, you have to go. Have you been to a Greek ministry to find out that you want the policy I, I, document? I don't know how many times we need to ask. I'm to saying get. that have you been there to and, interact and with saying, them? I don't know how many times to ask. If, look, if there's a, po a public policy mm -hmm. that expects to rally all of us together mm -hmm. around the table to mm -hmm. solve a problem that we have identified. Mm -hmm. The document should be public. The budget is public. The budget statement is public. So can, can, can I ask you one question? I what you are I, saying is I agree with mm -hmm. you. I'm not I'm not debating you. Let me ask you the fact that it's not public, you want to suggest or draw inferences that 
We don't have policy documents. I, I need you to educate me and inform me. Is there a document, a policy document on planting for food? Yeah, I think they have it. Because per the successes they're having. <laughs> so by what document are they working with? So, 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 so how document. come Parliament doesn't have this document, which is important, which would, I have, don't know whether which would have an impact I, I'm on... I'm not a legal because we are. I don't look, know by in, legal... In the, in the present budget, uh -huh. we have budgeted for uh, fertilizers. We have budgeted for agri extension officers. We have budgeted for improved seedlings. We have budgeted. There's even 600 million for cocoa, uh, stimulus package, blah, blah, blah. Now, is it, is it, can I, I'm, can, is, so, it a, is it a legal requirement that a government policy such as planting for food should be presented to like parliament should have the document parliament i don't is, know parliament is asking, i'm not in parliament, parliament i'm not a legal for practitioner it. parliament is asking for it they i ask, remember and what happened 27 well i don't think they have it if they, they have oh, maybe i think they have, it. I think they have, they have it whether mm -hmm. it is efficient to, to ah, okay. so mm -hmm. so now i'm right mm -hmm. it would it doesn't have to go to parliament but, they, but i think I, as a media man mm -hmm. you can go I there know, i know that i know that you they, haven't you haven't made me talk no 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 you have talked <laughs> Stephen, don't do this no like no 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 don't do this stop I'm it. Not, you don't understand what i'm saying and you if I check the time you what you are doing i like it it's not bad but at least let me no, but you asked me for one minute i give you okay I'm sorry okay, okay. so wrap up for me <laughs> what i'm trying to say is that what are the questions you are asking? The same thing Doc is talking about. The same thing I'm talking about. They are all important. But my advice to whoever has control over, mm -hmm. in terms of jurisdiction, in terms of stewardship and responsibility, I want to end by this. If they will take as example, mm -hmm. um, I have acquired a land around Mampong. Mm -hmm. And I have some Chinese friends. And they are like, oh, we can grow a kind of or type of um grass okay that is so it's in high demand outside for cattle okay. do you know what they asked me we should do no they wanted us to use between six months and one year to take temperature differences listen to me well mm. after that they want to grow at different points okay take this the the the, the produce the, yes and check whether it will meet the standard that they want what I'm, all that I'm saying is that whether we even have policies or not, I want to know. Maybe they know. I'm speaking as a layman when it comes to that. I'm not there. I don't know. We always have to, MPP, NDC, we have to properly get well-defined value chain. Mm. Properly. Mm. When we say value chain, involving everything. Now we even use value network okay. to make sure that before we want to take off, this thing is done properly, practically, Feasible on paper before we From start. The Normally the we have policies, mm. and shortly in a shoddy manner we have some documents. And okay. when we start along the line, we realize one of the segments okay. we get stuck. Thank you. So this is what I would say. Thank that you. We need to properly define our our value chains mm. in terms of our policies, the things we want to do, mm. our programs, and know where we are heading okay. to it. Thank you very much, Honourable. Uh, yeah. The farmers are crying. What help can we give them? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Good morning to our cherished viewers, and more especially the good people of Damaru <laughs> constituency. <laughs> Let me go back. As a government, yeah. there are a lot of interventions you have to put in place if you want to promote agri-production. And you recall in 2015, President Mahama came out that we spent about $1.5 billion mm. on importation of rice, 2015, mm. sugar, frozen chicken, mm. And that there was tomatoes, mm. and that there was the need mm -hmm. to do a consensus effort to ensure that we reverse this trend. Mm. And planting for food and jobs did not start now, but just that it has a different name. Okay. Under the end, is we have what we call the block farm system. Okay. And by then, I was the DC, mm -hmm. and, and, and the government the anticipated thing. that mm -hmm. there will be overproduction. Okay. So what measures do we put in place? Mm. So I'm linking these two. All right. First was that let's set up a buffer stock company right. to cushion farmers in terms of bumper harvest mm -hmm. so that at least when they overproduce, okay. government should intervene to buy it at a certain price and keep it. Okay. So that the farmer, we all know that most farmers do not receive salary at the end of the month. That is what they depend on. Mm. And that brought this buffer stock company. So if it is effectively working, okay. this is the time they should intervene. Now, 
fast track to 2015 when President Mama said this. First was, how do we reduce import of chicken? So mm -hmm. the 300,000 broiler project came in. And by 2016, the uh, Commander Sugar Factory mm -hmm. came in in a bit to what? To ensure that we produce more sugar. Okay. Then there was supposed to be a factory, <coughs> rice factory at Savilgu. Mm. So that whatever is produced, government will see how it will absorb it, mm. make sure that we process. Third was packaging mm -hmm. to ensure that even if it is locally produced right mm. and it is well packaged, okay. it's a way of attracting customers to buy. How did we do and with that? How did we do with that? We had a beautiful plan. How did we do I, that? That's what I'm saying. I'm coming. By, I've, I've told you how we set up the 300,000 uh, broiler, mm. the commander sugar factory. Mm. And by 2016, and we all failed. by 2016, 60% mm. of rice consumed in Ghana was locally produced. 60 or 50? 60%. Of rice produced according to what's locally service. produced. So, according to statistical service, you can take our uh, the state of the nation's address. Okay, it indicated clearly. Now, when MPP came to power, mm. and let me also add what happened. Most of the locally produced uh, farm produce were channeled to school feeding mm. and other things to ensure that they absorb locally, like yam. We make sure that those farmers in Damango provide the secondary school within the catchment area. Rice, mm. they produce mm. maize, they, they produce yam, so that we consume what is produced locally. And this has resulted to significant improvement in terms of the price stability. Mm. So as at that time, like cassava, mm. a bag of cassava was about 150 Ghana cities. And let me also make it clear that it's not all the projects that are planted for food and crop. No. Okay. For example, cassava. In Damago, there is nothing like planting for food on just for cassava. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, today, Damago, 20 cities, you can buy a, a bag of cassava. cassava. Really? Yes, 20 bumper, cities. Bumper it's wow. bumper harvest. Something that used to be 150, now 20, go to the communities. They have a stock of cassava. So it is not so just you, you, about... You don't want to give these are farmers, food jobs. No, this, no, these are farts. These are farmers that have nothing to do with... The, the extension, the extension <laughs> officers are there. Extension officers. The, the fertilizers these are, are local there. farmers. They don't apply fertilizer to cassava. 20 cities. It used Two. to be what? 150. That's a 20, uh, 50. Two. Okay. 2015. Look at cash crop. Cashew. Uh, is it a bag of cassava? The price yeah, of cashew bag. has dropped drastically last year and this year. Do you get, that is not planting for food. People have cashew mm. in their farms, in their houses, but the price was not good for so, them so, to sell. So what's your plan? What's your so point? what I'm saying mm. is that we always relate to planting for food and jobs. Planting, it is not all the case. And most often, if you go to these farmers, it is their own initiative, and they've been doing it over a period. So, 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 now, so in Damongo, there's, there's, there's bumper harvest. Going They're selling forward. cassava one bag for 20 cities. Yes. Their plea is that, look, now, even the 20 cities, people aren't I'm buying. Not, yes. How do we lift the, the produce from the farm that is to why, the market and even that, outside the country? That, that's, is, that's that, that is why I'm coming to the market. One, First of all, government must intervene to provide cushioning for farmers through buffer stock company, if it's still operate effectively. It's another way of at least cushioning farmers for not them to suffer much because we have the cobweb theory. Mm. If today the price of rice falls too much, you expect that by next year, they will be switching to the agri produce that was making that's, relatively that's good. Yeah. And that, when that one set in, then we are in difficulty. Uh, serious. How, how does the, so, bu the buffer stock and the commodities so, exchange help in this? Regard? That is what I'm saying that one, we have to have a buffer stock. Two, we should make sure that the school feeding program consume locally produced food. Okay. If you come to Damango, we should make sure that we buy within. Okay. And it's spread all around. Three, there must be conscious effort by the Minister of Agri mm. and the Business Development 
uh, ministry, ministry uh, to ensure that there is market for this pro farm produce. That is their work. Creativity is the issue. So this government is sleeping overnight. Thinking that anything could happen, then you come, bumper heaven, then you say planting for food. <coughs> that is not how. You have not been happy with the interventions that the government have put in place. <laughs> I'm saying that that is not the first time. <laughs> planting for this is not the first time. And okay. at the end, we have the block farm. Okay. And then we put this up. Okay. Uh, no, no, take, take a second bite at this. And again, the, uh, the question of lifting the food from the market, to, for, for the farms to the market. Look, government keeps talking about uh, cocoa roads, for example. The roads are bad. Um, they can't harvest. There are no silos. There is nothing. It, it just looks like we are just digging the earth to put the seed in, and we don't have a plan for it. How do we get out of this quagmire? Johnny, I, I wish I could prescribe a, a solution to it, and that's... I believe would have been revolutionary in terms of solving the issue, but you agree with me that uh, this whole issue about seasonal overflow of mm. food products vis-a-vis mm. -vis shortage during a, 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 a dry season or whatever it is, okay. is something that has been with us for a very long time, right. and it's something that as Ghanaians, mm -hmm. uh, we've been wanting a solution to it. And that is where I believe that when the NDC, uh, the MPP in 2015, 2016 okay. came up with a proposal that they are going to do one district, one, uh, one constituency, one warehouse. Yes. I think something of that, yes. right? Yes. Yes. One constituency, mm -hmm. one warehouse, one village, one, one dam, dam, one district, one, one factory, factory right. was so attractive to the ordinary Ghanaian. Because this is a problem that we've been dealing with for so long. I listen to my honorable MP. He talks about a uh, block factory. Mm. These guys are talking about uh, what do they call it? Planting Planted for food and jobs. Right. No matter what name is being provided, the gentleman as a Vulgu who is planting his rice mm. cannot get market. Yeah, and that's a big, big The question. man at Fumbisi who is planting his rice cannot get market. He cannot get combined harvested to what? To harvest his rice. Yeah. So I'm interested in a roadmap, a roadmap that had been put out by the MPP from 2017, 2017, 2019, going into 2020 to solve this problem. And how effective has that roadmap worked? And that is where you ask the question, whether there's a policy or not. I don't know whether it should be a policy or not mm -hmm. a policy, but we need to have what? Evidence of what? Something being put in place right. to, to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And if there's no evidence, then it becomes disappointing that we find ourselves in this situation. Yeah. So it's not about, who did what? Mm -hmm. It's what is being done and what has been the results. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you for a fact, we are talking about rice. My brother, when you go to the other sectors, watermelon. Tomato. I was in Boko recently, mm -hmm. watermelon. Mm -hmm. Watermelon is something that you see these women sitting on the street. And I ask myself, you are sitting here, how many times will you get people to buy? Yeah. You go to tomatoes, mango. Mango at a point in time around a uh, Bechem area mm -hmm. there. You see a whole box of mango. They are selling to you for five cities. Yeah. I saw when I saw, mango fruits. I saw watermelon at so, uh, Sugakope on the yeah. Sugakope so, road. So it's, my brother, and it's rotting away, Johnny. Yeah. So this whole thing about helping people to develop tastes for certain products, I think the money can be channeled into other sectors. Mm -hmm. I think we pl place much uh, too much emphasis on cocoa. It's our, it's our backbone. But there are other products right. or agri products mm. that can help. Right. And I think government will have to diversify mm. its attention in terms of agreeing to the other sectors. Because, I, I don't know, but we, we, need, we need evidence. So, to so the government done. promised one district, one factory. And, you know, each time it comes up, there's heavy politicization that can say, oh, well, we have factories running. Uh, so we have factories not running. And the NDC is pulling and says, hey, oh, you didn't do nothing. MPP says, oh, we are doing something. You are not seeing so hard. Now, these areas that we have mentioned, there are so many other examples that we can give where the raw materials are. Yeah. Dr. Nkrumah had a master plan. He had silos. He had the factories, the Polugo factory, so many of them. Why can't we have them? What is keeping us from having them, Doc? Well, Maybe take I, a minute I, on I, the, I, the I, I think very Stephen quickly, can respond to it because it's in government. No, it boils down to it boils down to uh, prioritization. Prioritization in the sense that uh, this whole issue of uh, 
importation of rice. I, I had a text message where somebody told me that, look, our rice in Ghana that is being produced is not that different from that of Japan. Okay. The only difference is that the foreign rice or whatever it is, is going through a whole lot of processes right. for it to be attractive. So if we really want our rice to be attractive, we also have to take that what first step. But, but the nutritional value, yes, which, you which start, the nutritionist tells us. From, you start from somewhere. You start from somewhere. And it boils down to commitment. It's all about commitment. Commitment in the sense that if government is really serious about getting Ghanaians to eat locally manufactured food, mm. I think government will push in the, the, quest, put in the question of somebody getting a cut each time some bit of rice is imported. That is also, a, is, problem. Is also a problem. It boils down to the commitment, uh, 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 Johnny. It boils down to the commitment. Now, in the sense that, to look, to this buffer stock, no. do, you know, do you know the irony of this? No. City FM, I didn't want to mention the name, City FM did a documentary on rice mm. production in Northern Ghana. And they realized that Avnash was producing 10 to 15%. They spoke to, I don't know whether it's the Director General of Ghana Buffer Stock or whatever. Okay. When his attention was drawn upon the documentary, he said he was going to sit down with Avnash to see how they can resolve the problem. Now! <laughs> it boils down to commitment, Johnny. It boils down to commitment. Stephen, one district, one factory comes to questions now. And, and you are a farmer, I always make, make that reference. You know what the plight of your fellow farmers are. And this morning, I'm sure many of us, them are watching us. I mean, those, especially if you're going into the hinterlands, you'll find them with very attractive produce from, from their, their farms want to buy. sitting on the street and nobody stops to buy. Sometimes they literally chase the drivers to buy. If we had factories in these places, we could perhaps have saved them because I remember the bon, uh, Bonsu uh, Palm Factory. They used to drive through the eastern region, the Kede area, to take the palm nuts directly from the farms. So the farmers were always happy because once you plant, you just bring it to the roadside. To the it. truck will come, they wait, they buy it, they give you your money oh, there and there. And so you don't stress. Stephen, what help can we give the people? Planting for food and uh, jobs is there, yes, but one district, one factory, where go with that? Um, I think first thing we should understand, if we want to be realistic, is the fact that development is a process. And if you want to develop a country that for over 50 years, there are so many essential areas or segments of our development that they are in terms of priority or giving preferences, <laughs> they are inevitable. Okay. We should really look at the comprehensive nature of the work that government has. First, what we need to know, whether 1D1F or planting for food, okay, and all these policies, in terms of correctness, are they good, are they correct? Two, are they feasible? Are they in terms of timeliness? And then those who want to do it, do they have the capacity or the proven record? Mm. We need to look at this. And what goes into the entire value chain and the work? I don't think 1D1... We don't need to look at results. But of course, these things bring results. We are talking about how we can get the results. Mm. So I'm talking about how you can get there. <laughs> we can't just get results, wake up. And that's what I'm talking about process. You can't just wake up and say 1D1F and within one month, the factory spring up. That is not. And mind you, MPP, but, but, we are... But, but, but somebody will say... So, so I'm asking a question. Somebody says, look, your government in the 2016 election promise this as though it could happen overnight. That's not true. And, that is somebody's and, thinking. Mm. It's good you are saying somebody. It's somebody's thinking. Who on this earth can say that setting up factories, helping private sector to set up factories, industrialize your country is overnight? Then the person is myopic mm. in thinking. That's my view. <laughs> because even if you want to build kiosks, about three, four kiosks around, it's no overnight stuff. The fact is, uh, is the thing ongoing? Yes. Are we doing it? Yes. Probably as we expected. I mean, policies and programs. Even the budget we sit down and draw, take it to parliament, approve or not. Let's be honest. Not even in U.S. Oh, no, why are you laughing? I'm okay. surprised you are doing this properly. Mr. Sam oh, Agri. No, it's not, no it's, not, it's not fair. Mr. Sam Agri. What I'm saying, unless you don't understand Mr. these things. Mr. Sam Agri no, no, is, no, no, is, is with the Food and lab. Beverages Association. Can, can, can can hold on. No, no, you continue. No, uh, Mr. Not, Sam Agri right. I mean, is, no, is with the Food and Beverages Association. He's on the line. Mr. Agri, good morning. Thank you very much for your time.
Yeah, good morning. <laughs> okay, let's let's listen to Mr. Agri, please. Let's listen to gentlemen. Gentlemen. Let's yeah, listen to Mr. Agri, the, please. I want you to you hear what he has to say. Yeah. He's with the Food and Beverages Association. Good morning, sir. Yeah. What, what's your intervention yeah. uh, to this conversation? Yes, uh, actually, um, let me just uh, make it uh, quick because of time. You know, um, with the uh, rice imports that right. we have in the country, coupled with the, right. what is being produced locally. Now, if you look at the planting for jobs, or uh, planting for food, mm. and uh, the interventions that the Ministry of Agriculture has made, okay. it's a very ambitious one. Mm. But unfortunately, the problem that uh, we have okay. seen was that with all, amidst all the planning that they had, okay. there was a missing gap because uh, we least anticipated that there was going to be this uh, glut of uh, harvest. Okay. And uh, the uh, antis anticipated or unanticipated uh, problem that we are seeing mm. today. Mm. Now, what the Food and Beverages Association is doing okay. is that uh, we are working in concert with the uh, ministry mm. uh, to ensure that uh, the rice that is being produced locally are also purchased by the importers uh, for distribution within the country. So that it wouldn't be just an import uh, mm. problem that uh, some people are... Uh, saying that the rice imports has to be banned. That, was, okay. that wouldn't be the solution. Okay. Because even if we have to go that way, I'm telling you, in three months, what will happen is that I wouldn't have much rice to consume in this country. Can, can, I, can, I, ask you a quick, can I ask you a quick question, sir? Yeah. So the benchmark values at the ports for importation has been reduced, uh, yeah. which would signal that now people could import more at a cheaper rate. How do we reconcile that policy with you seeking to work in concert with the ministry and the agencies to ensure that there's local consumption of what we produce. How do we marry the two? In one breath, you want us to have local participation and enjoy what you produce locally. You and see, in another um, breath, uh, you are reducing uh, the benchmark values for us to import more. Yes. At the, at the time that the uh, trade ministry and the uh, customs division uh, decided that they needed to have a benchmark uh, reduction on uh, import of rice. Mm. The problem, as it were, was that uh, we didn't have much uh, rice if it comes to uh, uh, what we have uh, locally. Mm. But now, with the problem that we have, it will be fair if we go back to its original position, as it were. Okay. And also looking at uh, some product that uh, you will say that it has been reduced for for uh, uh, the uh, detriment of uh, local uh, uh, industries. Mm. Actually, this is not what even the uh, association called for. And if you look at mm. what even the AGI over the past years have been asking the government to look at or uh, rethink about this uh, position, we are all <coughs> in, in agreement that okay. uh, the reducing the benchmark on uh, locally. Uh, or the products that you mm. can locally uh, produce wasn't the best way okay. to go. Because once you do that, you put them on the disadvantaged side. Mm. So um, if we go back to it and then uh, reinstate what has to be, then that will be in order. Because I don't think even that one has really uh, given uh, much advantage to uh, most of the things that we import. But uh, let me go back to, to the quickly, right... Uh, quickly wrap up for uh, me. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. what, what we have to do was to actually have a system where the product that has been produced by the rice farmers okay. will immediately go into harvest, mm. storage, and the facilities being there for them to, or government putting up a company to buy those rice from them, and then having an intermediary processing the rice for the market. And once that rice is also ready, you have a marketing team that would then go... So, so why is it not happening? ...for the consumer. Yes, because of the interventions that wasn't there. But as I'm telling you, these are things that we are putting in place. And you'll be surprised to he see that from the next two, three months, things will really change. But at the moment, the situation as we see uh, from the uh, from BC Valley and the northern sector of the country as uh, having a glut of harvest. So you're Perhaps saying that by February, by February, uh, things will yes, change. By February, March, we, we, we may see very, very, very huge interventions. Christmas, uh, Christmas is back. coming. A lot of rice will be consumed. How do we clear that lot of rice there and make sure that it's consumed locally? Do you have a plan? Immediately, what 
uh, government will have to do is to look for the warehouses or perhaps the silos and buy off these rice and put them because the uh, private sector cannot do that until the government comes in with those interventions. Okay. So this is what uh, the first step that perhaps the uh, government could do, buy off all these uh, mm. rice that uh, are, are produced and okay. then we store them anticipating for the milling process to take place mm. so that the uh, uh, would-be uh, uh, investors Thank you. also have to come in. And then Thank you. Them. Mr. But Samagri. The bottom line of it is the uh, financial uh, uh, displacement because uh, we would then have to come in with financiers who could really support it. It's only mm. government that can take the first step to ensure that this problem is really resolved. Great. Mr. Samagri, thank you very much. It's with the Food and thank Beverages Association of Ghana. His uh, intervention quite timely. Stephen, wrap up for me. So, Mr. Agri says you should find the warehouses. You should find the, the money to help these farmers. And the responsibility is on you. You. Do you uh, take the responsibility? The responsibility is not only on the government. Well, but that's what that he one, says. Yes, he says that. But that's, I'm also saying that it's not only on the government. Mm. Government play or plays very critical role, yes. But the producers themselves, the okay. farmers themselves, okay. should also strategically position themselves and make sure that the things they are producing in terms of uh, competitiveness okay. on the market. Because mm. at the end of the day, you can't force somebody to buy something he doesn't want to buy. Mm -hmm. It's about preference of goods of the same liquidity and risk factors on the market. Mm. So yes, government has to play a role, I agree with them. They themselves too. But you made a point that I disagree. That why is that government is reducing probably if I understood. I asked the question. Taxes. I didn't make a point. Sorry. I asked the question. Yeah, but it was it was quite a leading question. No, I asked, I asked fine, the question. Fine. At least let me make my point. What I'm saying is that government has reduced taxes even for those who are bringing farm input machines for factories mm -hmm. and those of that that nature. That's what government can also do. Mm -hmm. Government reducing taxes does not mean we should bring. Government reduce the taxes only for food. Mm -hmm. No. The fact of the matter is that any government in Ghana will do its best possible to make sure that because agri is the mainstay of our economy, we can produce what a champion did some work. Me, I came to here was like uh, a champion's. Exactly. The, the, the unit of golf. And then, just as my honourable is saying, it cuts through. I think it's gone through metamorphosis to this level. But the fact of the matter is that. It's not only the government. One problem we have in Africa is that, yes, government has to play a central role, but we ourselves, we ourselves, how are we also planning our own value chains to make sure that we meet government halfway? Okay. That is what I'm trying to say. Okay, thank but you. Uh, Adam, step in for me, and as we wrap up this conversation, I want you to also focus on the fact that we keep asking people to get into a Greek. We say... Uh, we want to be the breadbasket, agri is the mainstay, we are an agrarian society and all of that. But if people, there's a young graduate who wants to get into agri this morning and he's seeing another farmer harvest and not be able to sell, would he be motivated or no. would he be demotivated? We'll Let's wrap up the conversation. To, 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 and Stephen yeah. says we must collaborate and, with and government. My brother just said the farmers, they'll produce. That is not the finished product. They just produce the rice. But they can do something can, to it. What can they do to they it? They can do something to it. That is why government intervention is. And that we is how I outline don't, don't, what don't, NDC don't was doing. Don't put me on the spot. I'm all saying that government now, has to... Can you give me one second? We are leaving it in the hands of Because you are misleading. You are misconstruing what I said. I said government has to play an integral role. Accepted. But they as farmers... Look, I'm into palm oil production. I make a lot of money. I'm not lying to you. Not too big. But at least when I get bumpers season, rather have some in my house, I will keep it. And you can get as much as per gallon, the mm -hmm. yellow one, 120, 130, 150, see, depending. And you make some money. You, so you some see, you, have you, see, one. you so, must, you so must, if you, you must if understand you, Stevie, Stevie, the if, type of farmers Stevie, we have. If you, if you, plan, you are talking Stevie, about commercial farmers. Stevie, uh, well, These hold, are hold subsistence hold, farmers. Hold on, hold on for me, Adam. So, Stephen, um, you, you know that there are different yeah, temperatures and moisture. Hold on. Yeah for storing food. So if you have maize, for example, mm -hmm. there's an extent to which you can store it. That's same true. with rice, same with millet, and all of that. If these farmers, who are literally doing hand to mouth, are not getting a, a bigger factory to go and drop their produce, or a bigger market, how do they help themselves? And knowing that our system of farming is largely rain-based, 
climate. Because in most cases, we don't have the irrigation available. That farmer there certainly would, would have no, lost hope. Yes, I agree with you. But what I'm saying is that that is why you have a leader who has this vision or policy. 1D, 1F, 1D, 1D, I'm, so I'm, I'm coming, D1. doing all these things. But I'm saying that the, the, the farmers, you also do, so can you say that 100% government should do everything? Yes. But if you don't also do anything to this see the situation and the anything. changes, we need to also motivate the, the farmers. We need to talk to them. We need to encourage okay. them. That's Thank what you. I'm let's, saying. Let's Adam take his bite. Sorry. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Let, let me give you one Nobody minute. Nobody said the farmers are not doing something. That is why they are crying. But I'm also not saying they, they are not doing anything. anything. Stephen, allow me. I'm encouraging them. Allow, allow him to give up. I don't want now, to when you come to us, one day three, one factory, he said that Ghanaians, you made give them hope. Then That is what Ghanaians were thinking. That some were thinking. You see. But they are going on. You see, you came out that they you are by four years. Each district will have a factory. Mm. Today you are now saying that is how Ghanaians were thinking. You see, this same government, when President Mama promised 200 secondary mm. schools within four years, the first year you came out, with, you expect 50 schools. Second year, you expect another 50. <laughs> Today you are here now telling <laughs> Ghanaians that that is how they were thinking. People vote ah, based on that. that. Ah. But, but that, he said, said, I never said that. On that. I never said that. I said, I said. Ah, I said, Ghanaians were thinking. And then you said, well, you said that, that is how That is how it is. You said, the man said this. Then that, you said, that is how What's so? wrong about this? He's mis you see? He's misconstrued so what please, I said. Please. So, the, so the factory, the the, Stephen says that. the factories are a process. It doesn't just happen. Yeah, and so, some and are, then, have started. That is what I'm telling them. In a matter of one year after President Mama, 20... Uh, 13. Oh. You were asking for 50 senior high school. Okay. 2014, you were asking for 100 because uh, 50, who, who 50 asked, every year. Who asked? MPP, you. Stephen, the president so said, you see the, the president the, said, the, 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 the president the said he's, in, of the, this he's in a hurry. He's in a hurry with the factories as well. Of course, in everything. He's in a hurry. Yeah, but you know something, when you make projections, we call something as certain it is risk. Okay. You can meet risk along the value chain, and that can slow you down, let you go faster or readjust. So what are the risks you have seen in trying to set up the factory? Plenty. Like Plenty. What? You can't get land? Government, who can't get land? I'm asking. I'm just... We are helping private sector. We need to support them to get funds. Government is doing its best, and that's why we're having some of them going on. Okay. Government is paying over $5 billion for us to have light. Paying fifty-eight million to, to manage their securitization. Okay. What has Government has got free SHS. Thank what you. light? Dr. Ahmed Jinnafor is this a senior light? lecturer at oh, the no. Ministry of Education in Winneba, and I like what the way Doc is looking at the politicians. What energy sector? But you left five billion. Doc, thank you very much for coming. We are producing five thousand. And Mr. Stephen Amwa is the main man at Maslock, and also Honourable Adam Mutawakilo. He is the member of Parliament for the Damongo constituency, isn't it? Uh, one more time to go to Parliament. Thank you very much for watching.